Hey guys, Pro here at VIP Outdoors, and today we're doing something way different. This is gonna turn out really, really good, or really, really bad. But I am taking a fresh Columbia River Spring Chinook and literally gonna put it through the grinder in hopes to make some of the best salmon burgers I've ever had. Generally speaking, when we do salmon burgers, it's usually with leftover fish and you flake it up and mix a bunch of stuff in there. I've often wondered to myself, what if we make it fresh? We take the prime salmon cut, which again is Columbia River Spring Chinook, we're gonna cube it up and hand form patties. And again, it's gonna turn out really, really good, or it's gonna be a bust and I'm gonna feel like I wasted a Columbia River Spring Chinook. I'm gonna eat it regardless, you know? But here's what we gotta do, guys. Before we put it through that LEM grinder, that one's a 7.75 horsepower, we gotta cut this up into cube sizes. So if you look here, I already started. We got, I don't know, whatever that is, measurement, about inch and a half to two inches um, cubed in a fish cube form, if that's a thing. But here's how I broke it down. We don't wanna have bones in there, obviously. So what I did is I broke this fish down into three sections. And I should say before I did that, I cut it in half. Put that aside. This tail piece here from the vent back, you aren't gonna have any bones, so that's kind of a good thing, easy to work with. This top part right here naturally wants to split, so I'm gonna take my knife and run it down there. One of the things that I did to this fish so I put it in the freezer for 24 hours and it's just in the process of defrosting right now. So it's gonna be easier to run your knife through. Then I'm gonna cut it down this third. And ultimately what I've done is I've separated the midsection, top section, and belly meat. Okay. Now, I'm gonna take each section and fillet it away from the skin. It's pretty simple, really. Once you have it frozen, you can almost just pull the skin through there and it wants to naturally come off. Like that, I'm gonna go ahead and cube it up. Well, I got it all cubed up. One of the things you wanna make sure you do is make sure you remove all the pin bones, all the rib bones. Again, everything that goes in this grinder is also gonna come out. So my hope is that there's so much fat in a springer that it naturally compacts together and binds together to where I don't have to use a binder. Let's give it a shot. I'm not kidding, I'm like excited and nervous at the same time. Let's see what happens here. I've never put fish into a meat grinder. We're gonna see how it goes. It looks pretty good. That's some good looking meat, I'm not gonna lie. And with that meat being partially frozen, it runs through that grinder really, really nicely. I also put the components of the grinder in the freezer as well to keep everything nice and cold. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to, I'm gonna, I want to see if I was gonna run it through one more time or not. Let me shut this off. See what a patty, patty's gonna look like on this. It's exactly what I was hoping, is that there's enough fat in there that it naturally binds together. I am gonna run it through. I'm not sure if I should run it through again. I'm gonna run half of it through again is what I'm gonna do. And then the other half, I'm gonna leave and make patty just like that. So that way I can tell you if it's worth grinding twice or not. All right, so when we make our patty, I'm just gonna do probably a tennis ball size patty. It's spring chinook guys, you don't have to do a lot to it. I am just going to put some salt on the exterior because I want to still taste that Columbia River Spring Chinook. I 
gonna put it right on this flat top here. Look at that, that is a good looking patty. So check this out guys, this is a second pass through and the consistency definitely changed. This is almost like a, oh gosh, I don't even know. Maybe like tuna can type, just kind of mushier, I suppose. Um, which I know when you're dealing with beef and venison and stuff, grinding it up twice is a little nicer, but I'm interested to see in how it plays out with this. The te texture definitely softer. It's very Play-Doh-like, if you will. All right, guys, so I'm gonna do these on the Blackstone here. The patties came out really nice. You can definitely tell the difference between the single grind, which are these four, and the double grind, just in the color and a little bit of texture. We're gonna do one of each. I'm gonna season them very simply with just ground sea salt, man. But I know when I grill springers, that's all I put on there. That's all they need, in all honesty. And yeah, just the texture of the double ground is definitely more mushy. I mean, they're both mushy. There's a lot of fat in springers, right? So we're going to see how they turn out. I'm just going to cook those two for right now. Make sure you season the backside. And while these are cooking, we are going to go get our buns ready to go. All right, what are we going to do for buns? I'm going to go with the pretzel bun. I really like pretzel buns. They're nice. They're hearty. They hold up very well, hence the hearty, I suppose. Split these guys open. Right there. Put some homemade spicy tartar sauce on here. The spicy tartar sauce, all I used was mayo, uh, dill pickle, pickled jalapeno, sriracha, uh, cream of tartar, salt, lemon juice, Worcestershire. I'm gonna hit on both sides of the bun just because you need to, right? So put some on the bottom. I'll make sure I put up the exact recipe for this for this tartar sauce. Okay, get that out of the way. We're gonna put the buns on that side, or excuse me, the patties on that. I'm gonna go ahead and slice up some tomato. I'm gonna slice the tomato pretty thin. I don't like a lot of tomato on my burger. Just a little bit. All right. That put aside. Cut my lemon. I'm gonna do a quick arugula salad to put on top of that salmon. Burger. It's that arugula salad. All it's gonna involve is arugula. I said I was going to put the patty on there. I lied. Changed my mind mid-stroke. What are you going to do? Right there. I just put a little olive oil on there. Put a little lemon juice. Fresh cracked pepper. And a little bit of good old-fashioned salt. put tartar on the top bun also because I don't know what it is about burgers I hate when there's a dry bun I freaking hate it I don't know what it's just a pet peeve my kid loves dry burgers and I cannot stand it so I'm doing it on both sides all right let's go take a look at the patties all right guys looking pretty good here so as you can see it's starting to change color about halfway up we got some color there's some serious fat coming out of that patty just natural fat, um, and that's what these springers are known for. So take your flat spatula. That's a nice little crunch on the top. Remember, that's the single grind. Is that right, Kim? Yeah. Yeah, that's the single grind. I think. I might have already lost track. One's a single, one's a double. We're going to figure out which one's which one. I lost track of which one's which. I'm pretty sure this is the double brand. 
So again, we got our double grind there on the right, single grind here on the left. I'm actually gonna throw some pickled red onions on there because I've never known fish to not be good with pickled red onions. I don't know. You want tomatoes, Cam? Yeah, all right, Cam wants tomatoes. We're putting tomatoes on a couple. I'm not a huge tomato guy on burgers. But there we have it, guys. Double and single grind fresh Columbia River Spring Chinook burgers. Let me cut one of these open, see what it looks like. That looks pretty legit. All right, moment of truth. You gotta taste it. Gotta taste it. It's all in the flavor. There's a single grind. Let's look at the consistency difference between the two. There's a plain as day difference. Single grind, double grind, big time difference. But at the end of the day, all comes down to taste, right? Wow, wow, wow. So, What's nice about spring chinook is you could grill it and it doesn't dry out. When you do this, it gives it that crust on the outside and locks more of that moisture in. And every bite, I'm not kidding, it's juicy, absolutely juicy. And then with the condiments on there, it makes for a great salmon burger. Anyways, guys, give it a try. Let me know what you think, but I'll tell you what, this is gonna be on my consistent menu throughout the year. Thanks for watching.